Guys, I've got something incredible for you. It is your friend Keith, and we are here live again in the control room at the one and only world-famous Essex Recording Studios just outside London in Southend-on-Sea, England, baby. Got the neon lights turned off right now at the moment. We've got one of the rarest, coolest ESP custom shop guitars I've ever seen. Guys, it's left-handed. It's a southpaw. It's super early date. And, of course, it is the style adopted and loved by Mr. James Hetfield of Metallica. If you want this exact guitar, if you want to buy this, it is for sale at EssexRecordingStudios.com. Go to EssexRecordingStudios.com. Go to the for sale section. Electric guitars. You can even go to ESP brand. You'll see it. You can buy it. It's where our lowest prices are. And if you're an American buyer, you don't have that silly internet sales tax that they charge when you buy on big websites like Reverb or eBay. However, this will also be on Reverb and eBay if you want it. Also, make sure you follow us on all the socials at Essex Recording Studios, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, all of it. Cool. So let's chat about what we've got here. I saw this and I freaked out because I've never seen a left-handed one ever. This is an ESP custom shop, custom, custom, if it wants to get in focus there, EXP guitar. This is the bolt-on version. So your MX has a set neck with a mahogany neck. It's heavier. It's got a thicker neck profile. This is the EXP, which has the bolt-on maple neck it's lighter it's better balanced people in general from what i've seen on the forums all prefer to play this model also little known fact while yes uh mr james hetfield does play set neck uh explorers he also plays bolt on and in fact his very first ever signature models is jh1 is bolt on guitar so some some people like to poo poo bolt on instruments but the fact of the matter is that the you know some of the greatest most famous guitar players in the world play both on instruments james hetfield's no exception um you know he's got a gazillion guitars but he certainly has played both ons and had official both on signature guitars they're quite quite rare and extremely valuable now what makes this special aside from it being left-handed is and that's a huge part of it is how early it is guys look at the original fitted left-handed ESP Explorer case with the old small gold logo. This is typically the uh, case style, logo style, case style that you see on uh, late 80s to early 90s instruments, all right? This has the dual 81 EMGs, uh, the silver font with the old logo as you can see there and there, the old style logo. Beautiful rosewood fretboard with the mother of pearl dot inlays that really pop. If I adjust the lighting, you might see what I'm talking about here. Yeah, the inlays really look nice, guys. Um, the other thing that's incredible is how low the serial number is on this, all right? Extremely low ESP serial number off 1029 one of the lowest ones i've ever seen and then also what gives away the the era and how early this is is this has the esp branded tuners i don't know if i would imagine goto manufactured them being a japanese brand but yes the early 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 esp tuners this is what you see on like the 92 93 instruments now I want to talk about authenticity. How do we know this thing's real? Because guys, this thing is worth huge money. It's worth big, big money in its own right. Just being an ESP custom shop explorer. Doesn't matter if it's if it's uh, neck through or bolt on. And like we said, a lot of people prefer the lighter weight, the better tone um, off the bolt on model. And you know, James Hetfield doesn't mind bolt ons either. So let's put that aside. Um, going to, so talking about authenticity, why that's important is because these get faked guys. Uh, I can't tell you how many fake 
uh, ESP explorers I've seen, and there's all sorts of people that do all sorts of crazy stuff, like get the LTD version and then do a headstock logo. Now, I will say this. I've never seen fake headstock logos or the custom shop, you know, circle logos on the back that are true and correct and proper to form. Also, there's things about the neck plate I'm going to talk to you about and show you. The neck plate screws that are correct. There, there's a lot of telltale signs that this thing is uh, authentic. One of the best things, though, is that it is a ultra rare left-handed model with the left-handed factory fitted for the model ESP factory vintage hard case. So the case tells you straight away that, that this is legit. The headstock logo, if you look at ESP, electronic sound products, do you see this gold metallic border here? I'm trying to get in focus. Gold metallic border around that. None of the water slide decals have that. That's I'm assuming that's hand painted. All right. Um, it looks like it's hand painted, but that's something that just never gets properly uh, duplicated with any fake headstock logos I've ever seen. You might also be able to make out in the in the uh, the white parts there. You can see it's kind of, see that little like, like metallic sparkle? That silver as well has a metallic sheen to it. So you have got metallic gold and metallic silver. All the fake decals I've ever seen have been flat colors. No metallic sheen. Yeah, you can see it in the E. See in the E, see all the, like, the little metallic dots? It's all the light reflecting off of it. They never have it right. Also, the word custom, same thing. The word custom is metallic just like the ESP, all right? Now, going over to this, I just want to show you. Yeah, I mean, you can pretty much see it right there. There's a little blemish right here underneath the word custom. What that is, I mean, boom, just that lighting. That is not like a chip or discoloration. There's a little nick right there. Ugh, this focus is killing me. Little tiny nick. And what that has done is it allowed a little bit of air to get into the lacquer. So that's like a, it. That's, you can't really. You can't feel it, it's all smooth, but it is a little bit of air under the lacquer. If you think of Jackson's with the Mother of Pearl logos, they're notorious for getting that like all down it. That That's isolated, that will stay like that for life. I would have no concern about that spreading, but it's just, again, you could, I mean, if you wanna take a magic marker, you can make that black to like, but that's underneath the surface of the clear coat and the lacquer there, just so you're all aware. Um, other things that uh, tell me everything's accurate and correct. I mean, some of it is just knowing what the hardware looks like, um, the stop tailpiece, the bridge, how the screws and the pickup mounts are. You know, that, that stuff that's just experience. Um, but one of the best things on the back here are, is this neck plate. And let me just, got my greasy fingerprints on. Let me give it a little wipe down here on that neck plate. So the neck plate, what I like to see is I like to see the oxidization on these screws because that is very authentic. If I, every ESP I've ever had, it's a bolt on from this era, all right? The neck plate screws look like that. They just corrode, they oxidize a certain way, and that is the correct patina for what they should look like. If these were like perfect looking, you know, perfect paint, no rust, no oxidization, no corrosion, I would be very, very concerned. Um, that would be a, a red flag. The font, the font for the serial number is correct. The angle, all right, the angle of the uh, beveled edge here is correct, although left-handed. That's important, and, and the shape of the neck plate is correct. Now, I want to talk to you about another thing that I really like to see. You're going to laugh and think it's funny, but it's, it's great because these are often taken off and are missing, which is the Made in Japan sticker. That's what this sticky stuff is. I can feel it right here. This sticky residue, all right, is where the Made in Japan sticker was peeled off and, the, and it's exactly in the right spot where it should be. 
And that's that, that, that is what you see when people peel them off more times than not. And then they might go and clean it all out, take their fingernails, scrape all this glue off, but that hasn't been done. So it's good to see that's another telltale sign of authenticity um, that we've got the glue from the correct Made in Japan sticker. On fakes, they have Made in Japan printed on, all right? Now, these ESP tuners, I've these are vintage. These are super old. I've never seen this faked, all right? No one's done it, and these are super hard to get. You, you don't see, these have never been seen on a fake, all right? I've never done it. And then again, going to this logo back here, see how I put the light over it? See how you can see that metallic finish on, on the, the white? It looks like white from far away, but it's actually like a snow white metallic. Again, none of the fakes uh, look anything like that. None of them look like that, guys. So this is 100% the real deal. Um, you, you know, and it takes someone who's had eyes on lots of different vintage ESPs to recognize all this stuff. But uh, I've, luckily your buddy Keith has had a lot of vintage ESPs. You know, we've got, I call it the old uh, ESP crack pipe. You, you got the correct truss rod from this era. Yep, that's correct. Um, everything you'd want to see here is present and correct. As far as condition goes, very good condition. This thing is, you know, uh, 30 years old or older. Um, I, I would say this is a first year based on the serial number, based on the tuners. Um, I've heard, I don't know exactly what the first year is. I saw something, I think, on the Guitar Collector website that said 92 was the first year for these. I've had the 90, 92, 93 uh, Kirk Hammett signatures, which also have um, this style tuners. Uh, super low serial numbers on those as well. So I'm going to guess this is a 92. That's my guesstimate, guys. There's no good uh, record keeping, really, when it comes to ESP from this era. They weren't, um, unfortunately, that fastidious with their record keeping, that meticulous. But um, because of the features we see on this, we have a really, really good idea. The low serial number... And the um, uh, uh, the tuners as well. Cool guys. Uh, like I said, yeah, very good condition. There are little marks peppered throughout it. Um, I don't even. I don't think it's worth pointing out every individual one because again, it is. Uh, I would say the majority of the blemishes would be on the back. Um, I'll I'll do a quick quick little look around little lacquer mark there can't feel it um again there's two little dings that have that that kind of effect underneath the lacquer that gives it that little cloudy effect uh or looks makes it look like a rub mark um i just here look pretty good i think i saw one yeah there's a little little ding right there there's if you get the light on this right there's some like Buckle marks in the lacquer and the clear coat there. I mean, with it being a bolt-on, if you wanted to give this a rotisserie restoration, like a Barrett-Jackson collector car, you could, you know. And luckily, black is like the easiest color to refinish and make look amazing. Personally, I like the vintage vibes of it. I like that it just makes it look more authentic, more of the era. Um, yeah, 100%, guys. This is an epic epic guitar all right normal normal uh cosmetic wear on the body for the era and for it being a metal guitar as far as like frets go guys there's like no fret wear on this all right this thing has barely been played all right i gotta go out of time here out of memory on the phone so essexrecordingstudios.com to buy it Follow us on the socials. Make sure you're subscribed. And uh, we'll see you soon, guys. Lots of guitars coming your way.